Well, hello. The word is alive this morning, and I'm grateful that you're alive today as well. Um, a little bit later than normal. I don't know if there's any of you that expect or maybe even hope uh, to get these uh, messages at a certain time of the day. I know Danny Vera prefers them at six in the morning. That ain't happening unless the Lord leads me to do that. But uh, here I am this morning. The word is rich this morning, and uh, took a little bit more time because I frankly wasn't ready. So. Uh, I can tell you that I'll keep doing this as long as the Lord leads me to do it, and uh, when He stops asking me to do it, I will stop asking, I will stop doing it. But uh, for today, uh, the word is uh, from two portions of scripture, Isaiah 40, 31, uh, which a very familiar portion of scripture, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Uh, we used to sing an old song in church with a different version of the scripture. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait upon the Lord, wait, not one of my favorite words. Uh, I don't like the word wait in terms of the kind that we need to lose, <laughs> but that's a whole other topic. I also don't like the four letter word wait. Uh, I went to four years of Bible school and what I'm about to tell you, I didn't learn there, but uh, I just want to get my creative on, inspired a little bit by Pastor Brandon Harrison up in Austin, Minnesota, who did a great job with the devotional yesterday, which by the way, there's so much great stuff online right now. If you are discouraged or need your faith uh, pumped up, man, you just don't have to look far to find all kinds of sources of great hope. But back to our scripture here today, Isaiah 40, 31 uses that four letter word, wait. So I don't know if you realize it, but in the ancient Greek, there's some silent letters in the word wait, because any time that the word wait is mentioned, you can really infer, oh, oh, I hate waiting. I stink at waiting. And today, or in our current situation, I listen for two things. Number one, how bad is it? And number two, how long is it gonna be? Or number two, how long do I have to wait? until life gets better or more normal or whatever, or until I get my freedom back. So wait, wait. So this scripture in Isaiah has been on my heart this morning, but one of the reasons why I'm here a little bit later than normal, whatever normal is, is because in my devotions today, the Lord led me to a place, you know, sometimes again, the word is alive. The Lord will take a concept from Isaiah and connect it with a situation in the gospels, which we're going to John chapter 13 here in a moment and help us realize how deep and practical his truths are. They that wait upon the Lord, they that wait, wait, and keep waiting, there's incredible blessings. But while we're waiting, 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 I'll be honest, sometimes the blessing is like, dude, it ain't worth this. It ain't worth that. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength, mount up on wings, all this kind of stuff. That sounds great, but this waiting has been a minute. So we go to John chapter 13, and Jesus gathers his disciples together for the Last Supper. And I read a devotional today by a gentleman that I read almost all the time, Pete Briscoe, Roots in Milwaukee, what, what, Wisconsin. And um, he talked about the fact that there's a dude that didn't show up that was supposed to be washing people's feet. Well, you know the story, obviously Jesus washed feet. But when Jesus went to Peter to wash his feet, verse six says, Peter said to him, Lord, are you gonna wash my feet? And Lord said, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. <laughs> Peter protested, no, you ain't never washing my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you don't belong to me. And Peter said, well, pff, then wash my head, my hands, my feet, not just my, wash every part of me. And Peter, like me, maybe like you, <laughs> didn't get what Jesus was doing, didn't get the lesson that he was teaching. So let's just land the plane here today like this. Here's what Jesus was telling Peter and me today. Wait and trust me. But while we wait and trust him, this example of Peter fits me better than I wanted to today. While I wait and trust Jesus, he goes to my vulnerable, nasty places. In Peter's case, his feet. And Jesus says, let me see your nastiness let me deal with your nastiness and let me help you with that which you can never ever do on your own. God's not arbitrary. He's not mean. He's not cruel. He is very intentional and he works all things together for good. 
Could it be that part of the good that God has for you and for me today is to expose our nastiness, our fear, our impatience, our lack of trust? And when those things are exposed, to invite Jesus to do all that needs to be done in some deep, nasty places. What's underneath my fear? What's underneath yours? If you ask him, he'll tell you. He'll wash your feet. He'll wash our feet. He'll wash our lack of trust. He'll wash our doubt. He'll wash our anger. Bottom line, when I watch the news, when I deal with the questions in my heart right now, I question God. I doubt him. Man, I want to let him wash that. So I don't know what it is that this situation is exposing in you, but like Peter, you might fight a little bit. I know I sure do because I hate waiting. But you know what? It's all an invitation to trust. Let's allow Jesus to wash whatever it is he wants to wash in us today. Let me pray a prayer blessing over you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for their kind encouragement and their comments. Lord, you know my heart. I'm doing this for you. But Lord, I praise you and I thank you for the kindness of so many. But Lord, this isn't about me. Lord, this is about our walk with you. Lord, wash my feet today. Lord, I pray that you reveal to all of us the areas of lack the areas, Lord Jesus, that you want to have access in our hearts and our emotions and our spirit. Lord, speak so clearly to us today, not just in these couple minutes we have together, but Lord, as we now go throughout the day, speak to us precisely, specifically, and invite us to greater places of freedom so that we can mount up with wings and as angles, that we can run and not be weary, that we can be strong, not in our doing, but rather in our waiting, in our surrender, and in our trust. Bless my friends today, Lord. Thank you that you're with us, and thank you that you have purpose for us in the wait. Oh, <laughs> remove the hug. <laughs> and Lord, I pray that you'd give us quiet, surrendered spirits today. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings on you.